Today's example covers the flexibility method applied to frames. This is an introductory example, so I'll use a simple structure with NOS of 1 so we can see how the procedure works. This is the structure that I'm using. It's a one story, one bay frame, 25 feet wide, 12 feet tall, 1.2 kip lateral force at the top, the members are numbered, E and I are given, and our task is to find the member forces and the reactions. I've chosen this primary structure here. I converted the, the lower left hand pin to a roller and the corresponding horizontal redundant force is shown as R1. We will now apply the applied load and the redundant force to the primary structure and look at the deflections and the moments. First, applying the redundant force to the primary structure, the deformed shape of the structure is shown there. The deflection in the direction of the redundant is labeled F11. That's the deflection at R1 due to a unit load at R1. The moment diagram in this case is shown here. And if you're not convinced about this moment diagram, pause the video and do the calculation. Next, we'll look at the lateral load, the applied load of 1.2 kips applied to the primary structure. The deformed shape of the structure is shown here. And the deflection delta 1 is the deflection at R1 due to the applied load of 1.2 kips. In this case, the moment diagram is shown here. Again, if you're not convinced about this, pause the video, do the calculations, and convince yourself that this is the right moment diagram. We'll be using the method of virtual work to calculate uh, these factors, F11 and delta 1. And the general equation is 1 over EI times an integration factor times the value of the real moment diagram times the value of the virtual moment diagram times the length of the member. And of course we have several members so we'll have to do this for each member and complete the sum. So let's start with F11. In the case of F11, the real moment diagram, the moment diagram due to the force that causes the deflection, is load case A. The virtual moment diagram, that is the moment diagram that's due to the unit load at the location where we want to calculate the deflection, is also load case A. In this case, we're looking for the deflection at R1 due to a unit load at R1. Let's go through the calculation. For member 1, we have integration factor of 1 third for a triangle times a triangle, real moment of 12 feet, virtual moment of 12 feet, member length of 12 feet. Now I'm saying moment of 12 feet, that's not a typical unit for moments, but remember that the force is a unit load. So the, the unit load doesn't carry units of, say, kips, for instance. It's just a unit. So the moment ends up looking a little bit strange in units of feet. Moving on to member two. We have one over EI times the integration factor of one for a rectangle times a rectangle. Height of the real moment diagram, 12 feet. Height of the virtual moment diagram, 12 feet. Length of the member, 25 feet. Moving on to member three, it's the same as member one, so I won't go over it in detail. Moving on to the calculation for delta one. In this case, the real moment diagram, again, due to the force that causes the deflection, is load case B. The force that's causing the deflection is the applied load of 1.2 kips. The virtual moment diagram corresponds to the, to the location where we want to compute the deflection. That's at the base of the structure, and that corresponds to load case A. We have the minus delta 1 because of, because of the sign convention. So for, for member 1, load case B has no moment, so that term goes to 0. For member 2, we have 1 over EI times 1 half, which is the integration factor for a rectangle times a triangle times the real moment of 14.4 kip feet, times the virtual moment of 12 feet, times the length of the member of 25 feet. And if you notice, load case A has upward curvature, load case B has downward curvature. So those are opposite in sign, and that's why we have the negative sign in front of this term. For member three, we have the one over EI. We have the negative sign, again, because load case A has rightward curvature, load case B has leftward curvature. Those are opposite in sign, so we get a negative sign when we do the multiplication. Real moment 
of 14.4 kip feet, virtual moment of 12 feet, member length of 12 feet. Here, I'm just copying the work that we did before. We can do the calculation. I'm leaving E and I out in this particular case because it's the same for all members, so I know it's going to cancel. May as well not plug in. So we do the multiplication shown, and, and we get the values shown here. Now, how do we use these? Our flexibility relationship says R is equal to F inverse delta. This would mean that R is equal to, in this case, delta 1 over F11. Of course, if we had matrices, we would actually have to compute the inverse. But since in this case it's NOS of 1, we have scalars. The inverse is simply the reciprocal. So R1 is equal to delta 1 over F11. Plug in the values, the EIs cancel. We get 0 0.6 kips. Let's interpret this result. This is the result that we have. R1 is equal 0 0.6 kips. And that result means this. On our primary structure, we have that 1.2 kip applied load at the top and a horizontal load of 0.6 kips at the lower left-hand roller. For the actual real structure, that would mean that we've computed the horizontal reaction at that lower left-hand pin. One of our tasks is to find the reactions. For that, we simply use statics. And you can confirm on your own that these three forces, the 0.6 kip horizontal force at the right-hand roller and the vertical couple of 0.576 kips is indeed what the calculations would yield. The other task that we have is to compute the moment diagram. And there's two ways that I want to show you about how we might do this. One way is to simply take this final free body diagram and compute the moment diagram, which is something that you should be able to do. In some cases, what may turn out to be easier is use the work that we've done already for R1 is equal to 1 and for the applied load on the primary structure. So let me walk you through that. Here are the moment diagrams that we had previously due to R1 is equal to 1 and due to the applied load. Well, we now know the scaling factor for the moment diagram on the left. That was calculated for R1 is equal to 1, but we know that R1 is equal to 0.6 kips. So we multiply every value on that diagram by 0.6 kips. We add it to the applied load. Again, here we're using the principle of superposition. Both of these events happen at the same time. So we scale the moment diagram on the left. We add it to the moment diagram on the right. And that is what I'm calling option number two, superposition of the moment diagrams. In either case, we get the following moment diagram. Again, uh, you can go through the calculations for option one so that you can convince yourself that indeed that is the moment diagram that we get. For option two, however, we can see that the values work out. If I multiply 12 feet by 0.6 kips, I get 7.2 kip feet, which is the value that's there at the peak of all the moment diagrams. For the left, the applied load moment diagram has values of 0, so that 7.2 kip feet comes out directly. Uh, for the right hand, upper right hand corner, the applied load has a downward curvature of 14.4. I add an upward curvature of 7.2, and I'm left with a net downward curvature of 7.2. Obviously, whether it be for option 1 or option 2, I haven't gone through all of the steps in the calculation. So again, this moment diagram is one of those places where you probably want to pause the video and do the work on the side and convince yourself that you can actually get to this answer when you do the work yourself. However, that uh, is the procedure for applying the flexibility method to frames. For the applied load and for the redundant with a value of 1, we computed the moment diagrams. We use those moment diagrams to compute the flexibility factors, the f's and the deltas by virtual work. We use the relation r is equal to f inverse delta to get our value of the redundant force r1. We interpreted that result physically. We computed all the other reactions by statics. And then we were presented with two different options to obtain the final moment diagram. A later complication will be doing the same procedure, but with the larger degree of indeterminacy so now we're working in a matrix formulation instead of a scalar formulation. However, the basic calculations won't change at all.
for any frame of any size.